I'm getting a strange reading on the PKE meter. What is it? <coughs> Legally distinct classic monsters! Frankenstein and Dracula monsters! Watch this! Get them, boys! In 1986, we finally received Ghostbusters toys. They weren't based on the hit film, but instead were modeled after a new spin-off cartoon called The Real Ghostbusters. For all of their pizzazz and curb appeal, there was a distinct lack of villains in the initial assortment. Aside from random ghosts and an undersized Mr. Stay Puffed, there wasn't a big baddie in the line like a Darth Vader or Cobra Commander. You had some goofy characters like X-Cop, but there was no one of note. Kenner would soon change that with a slew of ghouls and ghosts for the heroes to confront, including their Monsters line, which was the first time the real Ghostbusters toy line would introduce famous monsters into the figure series. Legally distinct from the Universal Monsters in design, the Monsters line included Dracula, the Frankenstein monster, the Wolfman, the Mummy, a zombie, and Quasimodo the Hunchback. Immediately, one observes how the design of each figure varies on a spectrum from creepy to goofy. While this latitude wasn't unheard of in the real Ghostbusters show either, where from episode to episode you went from truly scary to downright silly ghosts, having the monsters in the set be so inconsistent means as a kid you probably wouldn't want them all, depending on your tastes. We'll start with Dracula, what I consider to be one of the more underwhelming in the line, considering they had actual vampires on the real Ghostbusters series, and this figure looks nothing like any of them is a real shame. At best, he's a poor stand-in for the vampire Gregor from the episode No One Comes to Lupusville. But his goofy, winking expression and his cutesy, chubby face make this vampire less threatening than Count Chocula, and easily less scary than the Count on Sesame Street. Then there's the action gimmick. And you know how I feel about those. It's obvious that Kenner, just coming off the Superpowers line and heading into the Silverhawks line, wanted to stick with the Squeeze the Legs action gimmick. So Dracula opens his mouth and flourishes his arms. He even comes with a Superpowers-style cloth cape for good measure. But it means his articulation is almost nil. The Frankenstein monster is much the same. He's a caricature of the Universal version, almost a toddler-level version of the creature. And when you squeeze his big, stupid, chunky shoes, his mouth opens up, and his arms raise in that famous pose. Oh look, it's stuck. Surprise, surprise. Look, I get that the engineering of these types of toys was clever, but it comes at a cost. Playability and durability. And again, there was a much more threatening Frankenstein monster at one point on the cartoon. Alas, this figure avoids depicting that version. Unless you prefer childish designs, the zombie is the lowest point in this lineup. Squeeze his contorted legs and his eyes Google and his hair raises up on his head. Ooh, scary! Quasimodo is where the monster's line starts back on the upswing. While still retaining a cartoony look, the hunchback is so deformed it still manages to be creepy. Plus, his action gimmick incorporates him breaking out of his chains, which infuses the figure with an added level of threat and tension for play scenarios. Wolfman gets the award for being the only figure in the line that is arguably also in the cartoon series. In No One Comes to Lupusville, there is a werewolf that that is very close to the look of this action figure. This werewolf figure is also genuinely menacing in its design, and it howls at the moon with those frighteningly gangly arms. The Wolfman figure just fits in the Ghostbusters universe far better than many of these other monsters. But as usual, the action gimmick means you're rarely going to be posing this figure or messing with his arms and head. Finally, we come to the true gem of the monster's set, and the one to get if you can only pick one. The Mummy. Intricately sculpted to look like an ancient, shambling corpse, this figure integrates perfectly into a Ghostbusters adventure. The Mummy is neither childish nor too simplistic. Squeeze the legs and his head pops out and his arm falls off. That's right, his undead shrunken head reveals itself as his rotting limbs fall from his body. 
or get blown off by a proton stream. And the best part is that Kenner had the foresight to design fabric mummy bandages into the figure that permanently tether the arm and the head wrapping to the figure so they don't get lost. Plus, that means when his arm falls off, he gets to drag it around because it's caught in the bandages. And that's just cool. I salute Kenner for giving us the classic monsters in the real Ghostbusters figure line, but they are somewhat crippled by their action features, and only half of this figure set is truly worthy of being called Ghostbusters-level scary.